show my video all right fantastic hello everyone this is john obidi here i'm bringing up pk's video and you should see us side by side in no time fantastic so pk you are live great everyone can see you all right guys this is me as you know and this okay no this <laughs> is other than Olakule Shorion. and tonight we're talking about he is talking about endangered species so without further ado everyone is familiar uh, with your style and your topics of conversation let us know what to expect and just take it away awesome so um thank you john again it's a honor to be back here we had a fantastic time you know the last episode and we are here tonight again to try and take the conversation to another place not another level but just another place so um i'm going to be speaking very real quick on endangered species this is a work and a research i did like some years ago 2007 i think and i published the work some sometime around 2008 i think and um it's been a hit. We've, we've been able to help a lot of young people over the years working with the two-part endangered species audio. Um, and I'm going to kind of raise the conversation tonight. We wave you from the city and speak to uh, new ideas that pretty much endanger the average African youth. Uh, I'm going to dwell into that. Um, so um, that's it, John. Should I go oh, on? Yes, take it away. Awesome. So, uh, guys... Um, the African young person is critically endangered, right? And the reason why it's endangered is pretty simple. It's just looking at the highest standards that he holds so dear and comparing it to the universal standards that are um, already established in the world today. You really cannot have your idea about what value is. Value and its meaning pretty much have to pass the test of universality, not just the test of locality. The idea that a shoe cannot be a shoe in Lagos and be a jacket in the north because it traveled to the north. You can't be fat in Brazil last night and be short in Lagos two days after, because you, you cross a border. Once you are tall, you are tall in every economy. You will remain tall in Iraq, where they are bombing. You'll be tall in Sweden, where they, or Switzerland, where there's so much peace. You will be a constant for you to be labeled in your fabric. A wristwatch has to be a wristwatch in every currency. You can't have a selective expression of that same value. So in the same way, you cannot have your idea of what standards are or what um, principles are or what is acceptable in the world. Your idea works because it defines your originality. But there are areas that you really cannot have your idea. And, and the example I like to give is hard work or, or smart work or intelligence. You, you really can't, you know, be a fool and expect that somehow you will break into value, right? You, you, you really can't do that. You, you, you can't be lazy and be unserious in your commitment and just expect that the world will serve you and work for you. It doesn't work that way. So there are common laws that bind us together because we are human beings. Laws of love, laws of work, laws of thinking, laws of problem solving, laws of planting and harvesting, you know, these are loops in life. Their results are pretty much guaranteed in a format. The process is pretty much the same. Planting and reaping, night and day, right? Eating and excreting. All of these are all a process that you have to surrender to or you'll be a victim of it, right? In the same way, um, when you look at what you have done, you have to ask yourself, what does the American think about what I've done? What does the German think about what I've done? If everybody celebrates what you have done and they praise you for it, will that praise also happen if you have done that in Germany or somewhere in another country in Europe or in the United Kingdom or in the United States? You know, 
We cannot continue to pride ourselves in ideas that works and make sense only because of the deposit of ignorance in our locale, such that we value those things because of the blindness, the prevailing blindness, the mass, the vast, uh, the prevailing blindness that pretty much plagues the vast majority of our people. So we have to ask questions like, so what would be universal ideas? you know, that we've missed, you know. There are some basic things that are part of human nature, like entertainment is part of human nature, like sports is part of human nature. Everyone is entertained in one way or the other. And everyone will enjoy sports and play it or follow it in one way or the other. However, none of those should become so behavior governing that we lose our sense of thoroughness, that we lose our sense of focus, that we lose our sense of purpose such that we follow a football team at the expense of our own creative progress. We follow um, stars and entertainers, actors, musicians, you know, to the detriment of our own necessary progress. Because at the end of the day, you are your own. <laughs> at the end of the day, nobody wants you. There are some things to think about real quick. One of them is this. Africa, I've said again and again, is the world's single largest liability. Liability on one spot. None is as huge as what our continent represents. We produce what we don't consume. We, we, we consume what we don't produce. There's no economy in the world that can survive on that equation. I've said that for years. Part of that also is that we have received aid and support more than any continent in the world. We are still the world's poorest continent, telling us that a begging bowl is not a pathway to prosperity of any kind. And for every degree of favor that we seek, we lose a level of freedom. And for over 50 years, Africa has continued to trade its freedom. But we must forgive the people of 1950 and the people of 1940 and the people of 1960 and 1965 and the people of the 70s for the way they thought, for the weak decisions they took, for some of the you know, uh, unacceptable uh, collaborations that they undertook, right? In 1960, for example, Nigeria got independence. And since we got that independence, it's like we end our rights to self-destruct, right? And it's almost a tragedy that we got this independence. What we wanted in 1960 is what we still want now. The people want equal opportunities, they want the resources and the attention the individuality deserves. They want the education that can build a legacy for each one, everywhere, every Nigerian. They wanted to build a family they can be proud of. They wanted the resources of growth of career and business that they deserve as individuals to accrue to them. Fast track to over 50 years after. What we wanted in 1960 is still what we want now. It's so bad that we have come to call some musicians prophets. Uh, people like Fela are called prophets. People like uh, African China are called prophets. Why do we call them prophets? We call them prophets because what they sang about 50 years ago or 40 years ago or 20 years ago is still happening. It's still happening now. Then we say, ah, and Fela sang this song 20 years ago. He was a prophet. He saw into the future. Not necessarily. We see African China sang this song, you know, and what he's saying is happening now. No. Uh, not necessarily. When you look at it, Fela sang about the issues of his time. He wasn't futurizing. He wasn't doing strategic forecasting. He wasn't predicting the future. He was just singing about the issues of his time. He looks like a prophet today because the issues he sang about 20 years ago are still the same issues we are dealing with. It is the constancy of the issues that make what he said 20 years ago look like a prophecy. It wasn't a prophecy. It was what was happening. A prophecy can be that there's nothing negative in what is prevailing, and you are speaking to that this is going to come on the horizon. That is a prophecy. But when people are killing each other around you, and you rise up to say, people are killing each other, people are killing each other, people are killing each other, around us, and you say that 20 years ago, and 20 years after, more people are killing each other by your side. You have not prophesied. 
It's just that the old problem you know is now happening to new people. The concept of newness is an arrested quantity that has to be understood. Newness is not um, the appearance of something novel, necessarily. A lot of what we call newness is old news happening to new people. It's old news happening to new people. There's no newness really in those terms. That's a symposium discussion. But the idea is the problems we had 50 years ago are the same problems we have now, yet more and by far more complex. And so everything we complain about in 1983, Nigerians were talking about austerity. We're talking about austerity measure. At that time, a dollar and a naira were almost at the same level. Who could believe austerity measures were all over the newspaper? Austere times were all over the newspaper. Nigerians were complaining bitterly. I'm sure the people of 1983 who are dead now or alive, those who are dead will be turning in their graves. And those who are alive will wonder that whatever it is we were facing in 1993 is by far a testimonial, a positive testimonial compared to what we are facing now. Ladies and gentlemen, the assumption is we are endangered. We are critically endangered. A lot of the young people that you know are lost right there between sports and entertainment and fashion. Justifiably so, we are young people. But when that governs our thinking and governs our behavior and we are not able to produce anything or solve complex problems, then it becomes an issue, right? Now, Nigeria's population, they say, is people of age 31 and below. 70%. 70% of Nigeria's population is people of age 31 and below. That's supposed to be how many people? 10% of 180 million people is 18 million. By the time you are talking about 70%, you are speaking about almost close to 100 million people are between age 31 and below. That's a testimony. That's a good thing. That's supposed to be future energy future energy, except that a critical mass of this so-called future energy are distracted right there between sports and entertainment and fashion. We miss the old point. We miss the old conversation. And what is true is we have to defeat that. We actually have to practically defeat that. We have to come to a new place of strength. We have to come to a new place of quality. We have to be able to justify the type of things that we pride ourselves in, right? When I speak to the average young person, it says so many things. The only thing I hear is, I want to make it, I want to make money. I want to make it, I want to make money. What is the point of having money in the hand of a fool when he has no sense? I mean, what will he do with it? You need a lot of money to communicate nuisance at a level. To be able to disturb all the young girls in Unilag or disturb all the young girls in a female hostel, you need to be successful. Success has a new sense value. By the time you make a lot of money, it takes a lot of money to be a sugar daddy for one. It takes a lot of money to be an aristo for one. So by the time you make a lot of money, it's like skills. Even skills have a new sense value. Somebody say, well, I like to plan. That's the skill I want to develop. It's not enough to know how to plan. It's enough to know how to live than to plan. Because if you know how to plan alone, you can plan to rob a bank. That takes a lot of planning. If you know how to set goals, that takes a lot. You can use set goal setting to rape somebody. You can plan, you can set a goal to rape somebody's wife. You can set a goal to rob a bank, right? Bill Adin was an incredible project manager. Uh, to me, second only to Adolf Hitler. These are the limits of skills, right? The World Economic Forum already came out to show us 20 skills, sorry, 10 skills that will be critical by this year, 2020. They released these particular skills about five years ago, and today we have um, those skills out there with a lot of things on the horizon, Bitcoin, um, cryptocurrency, um, blockchain technology, um, artificial intelligence, right? Do you know that for, the, for real estate, for example, Part of the future of real estate is 3D printing, where we pretty much print our houses. And it's only a matter of time where we are going to print the plugs in it, the switches in it, and all of that, you know, 
that is the future. These are not things that I'm inventing. This is just the reality. But then we talk about technology. We speak about how to consume it. The world is not thinking about how to consume technology. The world is thinking about how to own that technology. Because we are now in a new brave world. A new brave world that thrives on three things alone. Global, digital, and connectivity. Global, digital, and connectivity. So the average African young person thinks about data and how he can browse and how he can do so many things, but it's not really thinking about how those things came to be and who is controlling them. Um, apart from the fact that for a very long time, uh, we are, we've been consumed and perplexed by the challenge of brain drain and how talent from Africa are traveling all over the world and being exported to different parts of the world. Well, what I'm talking about today is brain gain, not just brain drain, because the best talents in the world are coming to Africa to engage. We are the new frontier. We are the new frontier. And if we are the new frontier, that means we are 980 million people ready to buy. 980 million people with incredible potential. 980 million people with the capacity to buy anything. The world understands that as a market. And so the whole world is coming here. The best thinkers are coming here. The best lawyers are coming here. The best engineers are coming here. The best tech organizations are coming here. Some of the biggest banks we think of Africa, whether we like it or not. Somebody said, well, the infrastructure is bad. The airports are not encouraging. We spent all those things we even out. You see? All those things we just even out. It's just a matter of time. Let's give you 30 years. In 30 years' time, guys, think about it. Just think about it. In 30 years' time, let's play a 30-year game. In 30 years' time, I will be uh, like 79, right? In 30 years' time, how old will you be? If you are five years old today, you'll be 35. <laughs> you'll be 35. If you are 10 today, you'll be 40. My eight-year-old son will be 38. So if you are 20, you'll be 50. If you are 30, you will be 60. If you are 40, you'll be 70 right there. So if you are above 50, you will be 80 or you will be dead. I mean, it's pretty much like that. The question is, what are we doing? In 30 years' time, all the people you know in our politics across Nigeria, across Africa, all the guys you know in our politics, if you come to Nigeria, Buhari, Tinumbu, uh, uh, come on now, uh, Atiku, uh, all of those guys will have been gone. Not because anybody's going to kill them. It's just the sting of nature. These guys are in their 60s. They're in their 70s now. In 30 years' time, they will be 90-something. They will be 70 so They will be 100, 100 and something, right? So a cleansing is coming to the system and, and moving to way forward now. A cleansing is coming to the system in 30 years' time. Guess what? Go to the church. Go to the church. Go to the religious circle. Go to the mosque. A lot of the big names you hear as pastors, as religious leaders, give them another 30 years. Some of them are 70 already. Some of them are 60 already. Those who are even 50 will be 80 in 30 years' time, right? Then come back to look at the kids. Anybody between age 15 and below in 30 years' time will be 45, right? Will be, will, be, will be 45, will be 40, or 35. So whether we like it or not, power is going to change. Even globally, in 30 years' time, Donald Trump will be gone. Bernie Sanders will be gone. Uh, Hillary Clinton will be gone. Bill Clinton will be gone. A lot of the guys you know out there will be gone. In the music space, go there. Just go there. Find me the guys that are in their 50s. Find me the guys in their 60s. They will be gone. Probably Oprah will be gone. Probably Aline will be gone. You know, you go, go check it. 30 years is a safe time to say, how will the world be? What is going to be happening in the world? That's a big question. The bigger question is, where will you be? And what will you be doing in the world? Already, you are in a, at a disadvantage. The, the, the rules and the principles that govern uh, value in the world don't work here. Those things are very simple. One of them is quality of life. You don't have them. You see, when you speak of a first world country, you are pretty much speaking of about four to five things. 
I, I'll mention the one in my head right now. The first one you have is quality of life. The second one you have is equal opportunities. The third one you have is power of the currency. The fourth one you have is access to credit. There's a fifth one, and I don't know why it keeps leaving my mind. There's a fifth one. When they say a country is first world, that is what they mean. Those things are present there. Guess what? When they say a country is poor, or a Please country is third them. world, hello? Please na name the five again. The first one, I'm going to try and remember the five now. The first okay. one is quality of life. Okay. Quality of life. The second one is um, equal opportunities. The okay. third one is access to credit. Okay. Access to credit. The fourth one is power of the currency. Okay. Power of the currency. The fifth okay. one is what I'm trying to remember. Okay. Um, just give me a minute. I I'm trying to quickly think through that. The fifth one, um, um, enabling environments. That's it. Yeah. And Ease of business. So I'll list them again. The first one is quality of life. The second one is enabling environment. The third one is the power of the currency. The fourth one is equal opportunity. The fifth one is access to credit. When they say a country is a first world country, like uh, um, United States or the United Kingdom or Germany or Canada or Belgium, those countries have these five things in different degrees. So the strongest of them is the one that have them um, at the highest level uh, when aggregated, right? The poorest countries don't have the five, you know? They don't even have one, you know? Some, you know, quality of life, zero. Just look at, just look at your own country. I don't know what part of Africa you come from, but pick it up and look at it. Just if, for Nigerians, just look at it. Quality of life, zero. Enabling environment, zero. Equal opportunities, zero. There's no meritocracy here. Power of the currency, zero. Um, access to credit, zero. We don't even have banks. For you to have access to credit, it's so many things. The two easiest way to think about access to credit is paramount long-term loans, short, um, low interest rates. Long-term loans, that's the system. Over here, that's not how it works. It's short-term loans, high interest rates. That's opposite of what will be happening in any bank, right? That is balanced, that is in a system that works. So these things are being uh, controlled by, by, by these first world countries. And it's not a gift of nature. They created it. Um, when we accuse countries of xenophobia and all of that, and we accuse them of chasing people out of their country and with strict immigration laws, I understand where we are. But I've said it again and again. Nigeria also chased Ghanaians out of Nigeria in the 80s. That's where Ghana must go, came from. That bag was what Ghanaians who were leaving Africa, leaving Nigeria, were using to pack their stuff. So we call that bag Ghana must go, Ghana must go. And we chased the Ghanaians out. What were they doing? They were not controlling our businesses. They were not leading our, 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 uh, our ministries. No, they were teachers. They were cooks. They were, they, were, they were in the informal economy, pretty much. And it bothered us so much that we had to eliminate them. Think about that. So let's forget about that idea. Every country is allowed and permitted to protect the peace and the security and the advancement and prosperity of its own people. And if they quite frankly feel that you are a threat to that, they shouldn't do that, but they have a right to ask you to go, right? They shouldn't do that violently, but there's a place for that. It's self-preservation. It's self-preservation, right? And we are also in different parts of the world. The question before us today is, how do we navigate a world that is pretty terribly um, unequal, that um, operates with different experiences, delivered to different constituencies based on their choices. You, we have to be different. We have to be really different. The assumptions we all show there, the type of principles that we hold on to, the type of models, templates, um, performance mechanics, performance index that we celebrate has to change. We really have to lift all of that and, and, and come to a new place, really. That's, that's, that's how it works, you know. And, and part of that, really, part of that is to um, uh, also tolerate some bigger conversations. Why will the United States start a green card program and dash 50,000 green cards out every year? Why would they do that? 
What are they trying to do? It's simple. I don't think it's rocket science. They're increasing diversity, and they are raising another set of Americans. And like I said online some days ago, you have Americans growing up all around you now. You have Americans growing up in different corners, growing up in different areas. Right on your street, Americans are growing up there. And they are growing up there not as Fred other way, no, or with, as, as a Caucasian. They are growing up there as Ajayi, as Patai, and they carry American passports because they gave back to them in their country and then they did not live there. They came back to Africa, uh, they came back to Nigeria, and they continued to live and they continued to do what they do. And then they became 18, 19. They go abroad to have their master's program and then they are back, right? And then, I mean, they continue their value from there. How, how do we have, oh, there's a call trying to come for me. So how do we drive all of that? What, what does that mean for us? What it means is we need to begin to consider new ways of thinking. Instead of being jealous of their goodness and their prosperity that the Americans have brought to their own people, that the Europeans have brought to their own people. Forget about history. We like to talk about the fact that, well, America was built on some um, African labor. Europe was built on African labor, maybe. But here we are. Here we are. Acknowledging history has its place. There's a lot of reparation. Repar repar um, um, uh, reparation. What's the word? Reparations. Reparation in that, no doubt. But beyond all of that is to take our own destiny into our own hands. To ask questions about what do we do differently. And like I said, we can forgive the Africans that live like 50 years ago, like 1950, 1960, what was open to them. I mean, in 1950, there were no books about how to build a nation, really. <laughs> As at 1930, 1940 something, 1960, there were no books about how to build a country. Our leaders built, according to their understanding, they made a lot of mistakes. Most of them were thieves, no doubt. Most of them were rogues, but some were just sincerely clueless, except that sincerity is not a factor of production, right? Right? You can be sincere and sincerely go to jail. You can be sincere and be sincerely poor, be sincerely frustrated, and be sincerely stupid or sincerely foolish. So these are realities. Having, having considered that, though, the question is, what do we do today? It will be tough to forgive the Africans of 2050, to forgive the Africans of 2060, to forgive the Africans of 2055. Why? Because we have a new opportunity before us right now. This opportunity will not be given to you by the government. We are endangered all around. In our country, we are endangered because there is no meritocracy. There is no reward for integrity. When you are full of integrity, they say you are a fool. When you are confident, they say you are arrogant. When you are prudent, they say you are stingy. When you are principled, they say you are wicked. When you are loving, they say you are mugu. I mean, this is just how it works. Our reality is upside down. The system is against you. The government is against you because the policies, the rules, the way they are thinking. And quite frankly, I'm not talking about APC. PDP, APC is all the same party. It's only in your head that you think you have two parties. How do somebody cross from a party today, PDP, and go to APC? And somewhere in your head, as a young person, it is it's in a different party. And it's now clean. You mean in three months? Of moving to a new party is now clean and then the same guy ports again and goes back to his party in another six months to pdp and then we continue to fool ourselves that we have a true party system options is the way power centers rule the world they are not partisan they put their interests on all the available options whichever one you choose you are choosing them and that's how power works i'm going to challenge you to transcend that thinking by that i don't condemn any government i don't point fingers at the people in power the truth is the his governments in Africa now have a history. We have a history that has brought us here. We are not the poorest continent. As at, sorry, we are not the poorest countries in the world. As at 1965, Singapore was coming to the Lagos State government in Nigeria to beg for aid and to ask for support. 1965, fast track to, 2000 and to, to 2020, Singapore is a first world nation with a per capita income bigger, more massive, than that of his colonial master, the British, you see? So all of that can change. Not to take your time, uh, tomorrow at my Indaba, 
We're going to be speaking about nest ideas. I know there are so many ideas. John wants me to touch on the endangered species, but I think I've touched uh, enough. Tomorrow you come and let's sit on these things and learn how we are going to navigate differently. Tomorrow's event is not uh, a paid event, but it's not a free event either. The way we have packaged it because of the quality of the conversation, we don't want just anybody to be there. So we have asked those who paid for the Sunday edition to nominate people. We came here on Air Start Africa and we gave a huge discount to people. Those guys are also nominating people. However, when as myself and John thought about it, we thought we should give more people a chance. So this is what we have done, right? If you are part of Head Start Africa, John is going to explain that more, right? You now have a free pass to come to Next Ideas for tomorrow only. For tomorrow only. Just imagine um, people are paying 150K, 200K, 300K for this thing on Sunday, though at a different level of conversation because of the quality of that audience. But for you, it's pretty much uh, broken down to your level so that we can move it from there. And they will also be there. So, uh, um, and then not just you, you can also invite somebody, one friend, you and one friend. So if you really want to come, John will explain how we are going to do that. But tonight for Ed Start Africa, we also did the same thing for the followers on Think, Think Nation with Ubon King. Myself and Ubon King spoke and we thought we should also give room for people in the Think, Think Nation to be part of the program. We've done that already. And so we are bringing it live here as well to say, if you are part of Estrat Africa, you are now you now have a free pass. You should rejoice. You should, you should yeah. be very excited. You now have sure a free right pass now. to attend the 365 tomorrow. Four o'clock is kickoff time. Everybody is here. I received um, Thomas Frey this afternoon at the International Airport. He's Fantastic. in. Dr. Banji is in. All the Fantastic. facilitators are in. John is ready. Um, Trisha is there. Um, Shola Muson is in. He flew in all the way from Dallas to speak on artificial intelligence. He's in already. Everybody's ready to go. So get on board, right? You now have a free pass, courtesy Head Start Africa. I wish I had Head Start Africa when I was where you are in time and in age. But so it's there live. Um, um, John will explain how you are going to do your registration. But tell your friends, Head Start Africa now have a free pass. The venue is at Pistis Hall in Maryland, behind Mobile Philly Station. Pistis Hall. That's where um, Elevation Church also uses for their services. Pistis Hall, uh, behind Maryland Philly Station. Four o'clock. We are live there, and we are going. Be there on time. It's first come, first serve. People are coming from all over. Once the okay, so, are full, we're not going so, to allow any stampede. We so we, we, we need I'll people advise to... advise you to be in on time. Be there at three, so that you can get your seats. We are leaving the seats strictly on first come, first serve basis, right? So get in there, get your friends. As long as you're on Estate Africa, John can you hear me? what you need to do. You can take it from there, John. Okay. Can you hear me, sir? Hello? Can you hear me? Can you see and hear me? Hello? Can you see and hear That's me? Probably never. <laughs> I'm back. Oh. Hello? I'm back. John, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you see me? Can you Hello, see me? John. I'm here. Can anybody see me yet? Okay, I'm gonna have to. Re I'm gonna have to. Are you live there? No, no, no. I was just recording. Okay. I need to know what is going on. Can somebody reach out to me somewhere? Can I know what's happening to John? Hello. Can you hear me? Hello, I'm here. Hello, I'm here. Can you see me? So I think they can. I think they can see me, but you can't. I don't know. Okay, so, so people are saying that they can, they can, they can see and hear me. I don't know why. PK can't. I wanted to just explain how exactly Hello. you will get access. Hello, can you see me?
Okay, so I'm going to. Hello. Is anybody there? John is here. Okay, so I'm going to remove PK from the broadcast. So I'm going to from the broadcast so that he can rejoin. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm, let me explain. While PK is still trying to get back into the broadcast, there's a link we created for you guys to fill. I need you guys to fill a form, okay? Uh, let me see. Hold on a sec. Just give me a sec. Ignore case in regex. Ignore case. Stay with me. All right. So I need you guys to go to this URL, okay? We just created a special link for head starters, okay? So everyone who is going to be able to make it tomorrow, you need to reserve your seat by going to headstartafrica.com slash next ideas. I'm going to put the URL at the bottom of the screen. Okay, PK is back. Okay, so I'm putting you on the screen. Great. Fantastic. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to put this on the screen. Hold on a sec. Stay with me. Okay. Okay, if you want to be there, hold on. I'm going to show you your link. There we go. All right, so look at your link at the bottom of the screen, okay? You see headstartafrica.com slash next ideas, okay? So you want to be a part of the event tomorrow. Tomorrow's event is, though it's a free event, it is exclusive to a few invited guests, okay? It's not for everybody. It's free, but it's exclusive to a few invited guests, all right? But um, we have created a slot for heads, people from Head Start Africa because, of course, of the level of conversation. We're not just opening it to the general public. It's not just for every Tom, Dick, and Harry to attend. And that's yeah. why you have been here with us tonight to have a taste of the ideas. You have a certain level of understanding, and that's the kind of energy that we want in the room tomorrow, okay? So go to that URL at the bottom of your screen, um, headstartafrica.com forward slash next ideas fortunately for those living in lagos of course you can just um walk by and and uh, be there for those of you who are not in lagos well i don't know but this is a physical event and it's um it's only available to those who can be there in person okay so fill that form and come to the venue with a form of identification so that they can know that you booked your seat through this special link from Head Start Africa. I'm looking at the link now and people have already started filling the form and booking their slots. That's fantastic. So you, you go to that URL, you see where you put in your name, email and phone number, fill it. The people at the, at the door will have all these details and they will usher you in, all right? So PK, people are asking about the people who want to stream online and stuff, <laughs> you know, uh, we we, I, I, we we don't have any plans for streaming. We online. don't have plans for streaming for tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you're gonna have to find your way to the venue tomorrow. I mean, yeah, we have worked hard enough to make it available free. Um, yeah, it's a lot of cost. You need to go and find out what the some people think because I'm close to the owners of the place. Maybe I got it for free. We paid well, over six hundred thousand naira. Okay, so I need to let you know that. It's not free, so uh, uh, it's a lot of investment to do a program for free. It's a lot, yeah, of it is. So, yeah, get yourself into the room, that's the best we can do, yeah. And the, the, the caliber of guests that are going to be there, too. So, yeah. it's um, it's, it's a huge There's investment a in your, all of that, yes, you know, it's a huge investment in your own uh, personal development. Um, someone is asking that if it starts by four, what time do we expect to close? Well, we, we are planning to be out of there by eight o'clock, okay. 8 p.m. That's fine. 
All right, guys. So I hope everyone has seen that. Now, um, as usual, I'm going to give uh, three people the opportunity to ask high, um, high value questions. If you have um, very unique, sophisticated questions, I'll give three people uh, a chance to ask not many questions, just one question for Ola Kuleshoria to take. And then we will call this a night. Meanwhile, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here with us guys it's it's late it's uh nine minutes past 11 and you guys it's about 300 and uh third 340 people watching right now and you guys you know turned up on such short notice thank you is it Chiku says uh, should we expect a confirmation email uh don't worry you won't get a confirmation email if you fill the form and it says that the, the submission was successful that's okay Come with anything that identifies you as the as your name and surname, okay? Any kind of ID that has your picture, your name and surname, and you will be let into the venue, okay? All right, questions real quick. Questions, questions, questions. Questions. Questions, questions. Um, Wally Kekere says, I'm sorry if your name is, is different, but that's how we pronounce it in Nigeria. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, she says, uh, what about those of us in Kenya? Hey, for those <laughs> of you in Kenya, I'm so sorry. What you do is to register for the online session um, yeah. for the Sunday event. That is about mm. $50 or thereabout. Yeah. Go find that on the website, kenetshurio.com slash nest 365 Find that yeah. and register for that. You have, you have the main session live um online on sunday yeah we've concluded all fantastic arrangements for the live streaming on on sunday and the team that's handling the live streaming they are super professional you are going to get the best quality you're going to feel as if you are right there in the room so whether you're in kenya you're in zambia i think there was someone from zambia on the on the previous stream wherever you are in the world and there's some people here who are watching from the united states and are wondering how they could be there don't worry if you can be uh, if you can take up, take us up on the live stream offer, you will get all the access as if you were right there in the room. Okay. Um, so Wally K. Carey from Kenya, please get access to the the live stream for the Sunday event. Um, if you're in the DAS, if you're outside Nigeria and you want the live stream access and you have any issues with it, send me a private message and I'll send you a link. Okay. Um, you, 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 we take every major credit card, but if you have any issues and you want to get access, send me a DM and we'll find a way to fix you up, okay? Someone is asking for the venue, the venue again. The venue for tomorrow? Yes. Peace this all. Yeah. Peace this all. It's just right behind Mobile Filling Station in Maryland. Okay. Peace um, this all. Maryland, Ikeja here. Not Maryland in the United States. Okay. Maryland, <laughs> Ikeja here. Maryland, and Ikeja. Right behind Mobile Filling Station. Okay. Peace this all. That's okay. also Fantastic. where Elevation Church is. Okay. Matter of fact, they power that all. Okay. It's all. It's not a church. Okay. Okay. Peace is all. Okay. All right. So if you're on the Telegram channel, I'm going to send what he just said, the address, straight to the Telegram channel. That's why I, I always keep on harping on this. Everyone on here South Africa should be on a Telegram channel, and that's because of how how fast you guys get information through Telegram. Okay. So I'm going to send it all there. Someone said something about making payments. So uh, someone said, uh, let me see, who is this person? Ganiwa Idris said, some of us made payments through, sorry, let me see that comment again. Ganiyo. Ganiyo, can I find your comment again now? Ganiyo Idris. Yes, he said, some of us made payments through Head Start Africa. How can we validate this? Payment, I, if, you have, if you made payments, then that must be the 80 thousand uh, the eighty thousand era um offer uh, you should have been contacted by now right if you if you made payment and fill the form they have to go together our gani redress because we make payments we need to know through the form okay so it's those on the form that the team is contacting okay but if you are sure you made payment you've not been contacted send me a private message and uh, we'll fix you up okay this is 11th hour let's get this let's get this settled okay fantastic Tony peters fantastic good to see you in here let me see. All right. So there's a Olua Shion Awotobi says, is there an avenue to volunteer for the event? Well, it's already 11th hour. We already, we already have that covered. But just show up and um, 
and enjoy what we have prepared for you, okay? All right, so Ojiugo Okoli is asking you, PK. She says, how do you reprogram the mind of a contemporary young Nigerian so they know that challenges aren't peculiar to them? We live, we live, we live in uh, um, very complex times. To be honest, that reprogramming is not lacking. The instruments for the reprogramming is not lacking. What is lacking is the character and the will on the part of young people to embrace um, such level of commitment, right? Um, there is what is happening in across Africa now transcends age. You know, the old are facing it as much as young people are facing it. You know, young people have energy, but they lack wisdom. The mm. old people have the wisdom but they lack the strength to execute. So we all face all of that. And a, a, a lot of times, you know, to ask questions about how to, you know, change that mind, there, there are some people you cannot help. I've said it again and again. It's very sad. I'm not, I'm not excited about it, but you cannot help some people. You can't help anyone who does not know that he has a problem. You cannot know, help anyone who may know that he has a problem but does not know that he needs help. You see, there are two different things. You may think you have a problem and you may think you are enough to solve the problem. Meanwhile, the problem you are facing cannot be solved inside out. It can only be solved outside in. You know, that's quite frankly what I think is going on across African countries. I think the diaspora Africa has the power to transform Africa. But Africans are looking inside out to transform themselves. And unfortunately, in a globalized world, that is an almost impractical articulation. But the point is, you also cannot, you can't help somebody who doesn't know that he has a problem. You can't help somebody who may know that he has a problem, but doesn't know that he needs help externally. But most critically, you cannot help anyone that thinks you are part of his problem. Mm. You can't. So when people come before me to throw their problems at me, I look at where they are in this block. They have to be, they have to know that they have a problem. They have to know, they have to accept that they need help. And then they cannot put me as part of their help, as part of their problems at all. Once you remove that out of the way, what you have is a willingness and the character to transcend that limitation, to defeat that limitation, to trump that particular challenge. That's all you have next. But to get people to that level, that is the challenge. Unfortunately, it's a choice. But when we know better, we do better. I know that. So at times, people just need to have clarity about the most important ideas that they need to focus on, and then they can begin to relieve themselves and permit themselves to go to the next level. Fantastic, guys. All right. So there's someone who asked something. Uh, he said, he or she said, if I become a political leader and seek for your advice, what two things would you recommend I attend to first and why? What you are going to attend to first may get you out of the government by the next election. True. <laughs> uh, honestly, because it's not... Yeah. The, you see, the people themselves don't understand value. You see, that's a critical problem. There's, it's one thing to want to help someone who has a sore, and the person does not like, like comfort so much that he hates um, iodine or bandage and he doesn't want you to apply penicillin, or somebody is so sick, but he must prefer his sickness so much that he will hate injection or tablets. That person doesn't want to be helped. So there's the way in which the only way to heal you of your sickness is to put you through some level of pain. If I'm going to give you an, an injection, I'm going to take you through some level of pain. Now, the, the, the vast majority of our people are not ready for that pain. That is the issue. And if you ask me what is the greatest problem in Africa, trust me, it's not corruption. Russia is corrupt. India is corrupt. China is corrupt. There's corruption in every country. I've done, I don't know what one country that is corruption that keeps them down. Corruption is not Nigeria's problem, right? It's not the economy. It's not the, our politics. It's not our leaders. Our leadership is not outsourced. That's not the problem. The problem of Africa is the terrible mass loud ignorance of his people 
We have too many people who know nothing and they are not aware that they don't know anything. That is the challenge. So giving people the education that they require is the first level of organization that you will need to do. Because when you empower people with that level of clarity, they are able to make uh, smart and credible decisions and to probe their environment. That is education. There's a difference between academics and education. Academic oh. is what you are taught. Education is what you teach yourself. And oh. when you are educated, what you are really able to do is not recall. Academics is the test of recall. Education is the test of transformation. When you are educated, it means you have the ability to experience your environment, yes, but to question that environment deep enough to find the options that exist in it and to know the ones to embrace amongst those options as a matter of supreme importance and urgency. To question your environment, to experience your environment, to question it deep enough to know the options that exist in it and to know the ones to embrace as a matter of supreme importance and urgency. By that definition, so many people are not educated even with a PhD. That is the education we need to offer our people and it is not in the classroom. It's not in the classroom. It is informal education. It comes from the sort of our language and how we defend it and democratize it. That's what we need, but that's a different articulation, symposium discussion in future. But that's Fantastic. one thing I will ask you to think of. But if you try to do that, I'm sure you must invent another way to win that election. Otherwise, your people will vote you out if you don't give them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If you don't share rights, they'll vote you out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's a, a question here. I think two people asked a similar question. So I'll just put one that will take on for the two. And uh, the question was, what habits or character can we cultivate as youth who want to compete at a global level? It's very simple. It's your ability to solve complex problems. It's, you see, there's a sense in which you, you can solve problems. I call it the first dimension to problem solving, where you are solving problems you have encountered before, right? And you are solving those kind of problems. Those are not complex problems. That's just a repetitive energy, right? There's something else you have to superimpose, which is how to solve complex problems of the type you have never encountered before. That is problem solving um, in the second dimension. In the third dimension, it's not just to be able to solve those problems, but to build solution blueprints around those problems and convert them to products and services. In the fourth dimension, it's not just to create products and services, but to ensure that, that those products gain traction globally and they transcend you know, the limits of geography within the host country that gave birth to them. So look at Japan. Japan has Toyota, but it's all over the world, not just in Tokyo. They have Honda, it's all over the world, not just in Tokyo. They have Sony. The biggest countries have a product or a service that they are selling to the whole world, attracting purchasing power from all over the world and putting it to headquarters in their, in, at home. The poorest countries don't have such products. We produce nothing. The little we produce is as assisted by nature. Cocoa, crude oil, uh, gold, uh, you know, uranium. You know, those are the things we pride ourselves in. Except for the goodness of nature, we will actually have nothing to produce. So I'm going to say problem solving. I have an, a non-profit called Ishaya Africa. The goal is to get at least a square root of 1% of our population to be able to solve problems at the highest level possible and being able to take them through the fourth dimension of problem solving, moving them from not just solving problems of the type they have not they have faced before, but solving problems of the type they have never faced before, building solution, solution, solution blueprints around those problems and converting them to products and services and then giving them traction to go around the world. That mm. is how what I think young people need to be able to do across the continent. Fantastic. All right, guys. So for this and more, please make sure that you attend in person. Um, Mute Efe is asking, will the CDs for past sessions of Next 365 be available for sale during this year's session? Uh, that's a yes. Um, yes. Yes. So show up to the venue. All the merchandise will be available right there for purchase. Okay. So for this and more, please show up tomorrow. Um, this, I mean, those of you who have paid through the Head Start Africa discounts, the 80,000 naira that you guys paid to be there on Sunday, that one is still being reserved for you. Please understand that if you paid that 80,000 naira, you are entitled to two days. Okay. Saturday, we have a dinner 
um, with all the speakers and all the guests. That day is for networking, okay? So make sure you make that day Saturday. I'm sure you got the emails by now. All the information is in the emails. And please, your email has multiple compartments. Your email has an inbox. It has promotions. It has spam. Sometimes if you're using Yahoo, it has junk mail or bulk mail, okay? And maybe even social. Check all the compartments. Turn it upside down like Kong Kong. Shake it before you come to my DM and say, I've not received it, okay? Check your email properly. You will see all the details, okay? So don't get it twisted. You are qualified for Saturday and Sunday, okay? All the details are in your email. If by any chance you are sure you have shaken your email box like Kong Kong and you have not seen it, then you can inbox me, okay? But for those who did not pay for the Saturday and Sunday sessions, through my relationship with Ola Kolesho you have access to tomorrow's session free of charge, okay? Because somebody was asking that, what about, is, is this for only those who pay the TK? No, this is for everyone coming from Head Start Africa who can be there physically tomorrow here in Lagos, Nigeria. But you have to register down below. The URL is right there. The link is right there. Headstartafrica.com slash next ideas. I'm looking at the form right now and um, a lot of people have already put in their details and registered. Just show up with your valid, any valid form of ID, anything that can identify you. It doesn't have to be a passport or anything. Just something that has your name and your face that we know it's you so that we know that we reserved that seat for you. Okay. All right. So, PK, we're going to let you go now so we can Thank get you. ready for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you for coming on here to bless us with your wisdom um, awesome. two times in, you know, in, uh, within one week. Thank you, <laughs> you know? Thank you so Thank, much, John. Thank you so much. Great. All right, sir. We'll see you on All the right, other side. Yeah, bye. Okay, here we are. Fantastic, guys. So there's nothing more to say. I hope you guys like my new haircut. Hmm? What's the use of looking so fly if you guys don't see it? Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to be speaking tomorrow, too, at Next Ideas. And also, I'll also be speaking at Next365 um on sunday and i'll be there on saturday so if any of you guys well of course a lot of you guys have paid but those of you guys who have paid for the full bouquet uh you're going to see me live in person we're going to have a nice time we'll network we'll have conversations so i look forward to it um there are no more questions um and again yeah um, I'm, I'm planning another webinar uh for those who attended the previous webinar we talked about what was it about again the thought leadership foundations and a lot of people were having aha moments light bulb moments it was a lot of value i'm planning another one for those who have never monetized their knowledge before i'm going to show you how to monetize from day one all right i'll post the details the date and time much later so please make sure you're in the telegram channel the facebook group is good you'll see it there but sometimes you might see the things happening on facebook late and that's why i harp on the telegram channel okay so i'll post details about that later after the events of this weekend are over um i'm gonna post the details i think maybe, maybe by monday or tuesday i don't know but whatever happens i'm gonna let you guys know all right until next time you know what it is use what you have what you have is plenty peace